From Reminder Media, this is Stay Paid, a sales and marketing podcast on a mission to help you close more deals and retain more business. Hosted by the VP of Marketing, Josh Stake, and Reminder Media's president, Luke Akery. So get ready to hear the golden nuggets that will allow you to live a life of freedom tomorrow, but only if you take action today. All right. Welcome to Stay Paid, everybody. Yes, welcome to Stay this Paid. Is a, this is a special episode. Normally, used to be whenever we would have guests, Ariel, Those were special Ariel backs up. Yeah. I, I have to maintain a, a steady volume for Ariel's sanity in terms yes. of the mixing. But uh, normally when we would have guests on, it would be like a special episode. Now it's like when it's just you and me, it's a special episode. <laughs> At it's least also, that's what we tell ourselves. It's also it's Valentine's Day this Friday, so maybe this is Love's this is in meant the to be. air. <laughs> This is coming on this out. episode. Josh this and I are going to write a romance <laughs> song. A romance song. A romance. Last song, year for Valentine's Day, song. we did um, we did uh, sales. How sales is like dating. Yeah. I remember so go that. back. Yeah, a year ago. That. Actually, that's super episode valuable. Episode sixty-seven. Um, has sales is like dating, and it's uh, it was good. We lit candles. We had some chocolate lava cake. I don't remember the chocolate <laughs> lava cake. I don't remember any of this. Hey, so on this episode, we actually have decided to go back um, because we've been having some amazing guests on the podcast, and we're going to play some clips from some of our guests that we've had, and we're just going to kind of react to them and riff on them. Sometimes when we're on the podcast interviewing people, you know, we want to let them speak. We don't want to interrupt them, and and sometimes you think of things that you want to say later after the fact. So we're going to revisit some of the best um, golden nuggets, yes, as you would call them. The best golden nuggets. Or as I wrote down on my paper, golden nuggest. I had a typo. What? Nuggest. <laughs> nuggest. Golden nuggest. <laughs> I'm gonna start using that for now on. That is a is a nuggest. That is a golden nuggest. But we've got we've got clips from Tom Ferry, Peter Lorimer, Jared Glant, Danny Morell, Beth Traverso, Andy Dane Carter. I don't want to list them all Some because beast. we might end up cutting some from for time, but I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. We'll, we'll get into it. We're gonna roll with this, man. This week's no, these are incredible. featured um featured review on iTunes. Woo-hoo. Comes from none, none other than Tim Bushnell. Hey, Tim, how you doing? Good old Tim. Good hey, old this Tim. This one's actually a great review. <laughs> yeah, now I just got to share about this. Yeah, go ahead. Title is I Find Myself Coming Back Again and Again. Five stars. This podcast gets better every time. I thought Andy Dane Carter was great. And then they have Peter Lorimer. And now I've heard a rumor that Tom Ferry's going to be on the podcast. <laughs> Spoiler alert, he already was. The caliber of their guest is incredible. This is a must listen for all sales and marketing pros, especially if you market for sales or marketing people like me. It's interesting, Tim. I got to share this about Tim. I hope he's I hope he listens to this. So Tim is a really good friend of mine, and he um, is high up in running in a company called Main Street Hub, which yeah. is a marketing company. It's a GoDaddy company. And um, it's so funny to hear his reaction. You ever have a family member that is actually like shocked <laughs> that you put out that what good you did stuff? Was good. <laughs> like he like he told me like, that and was he really good. told me well, the other mean? day, and this was sincere. Like um, he told me, it's like in the beginning. I mean, I know you guys were just getting started <laughs> and everything, but but where you guys are at today, it's actually I actually want to listen to it, and I'm just like it's kind of like an insult at the same time you're giving a great compliment, and I didn't even ask him to do that review, but that's so. Funny. I had I had to force myself to listen to a few of those early ones too. I so know it's crazy. If you're listening dude. now and you're an early, thank uh, you for sticking with us. Yeah, if you were an early doctor, thank you for sticking with us. If you've only just checked us out, go back and listen to some of those closet episodes. They but were, what, but what a great tip, man, or what a great golden nuggest. Right, what a great Greek. golden nuggest if you're following along from the beginning of this intro. Where you just got to stick with it. You just got to freaking stick with it, people. All right, so we're going to get into these clips. This first clip is from episode 117 where we had Tom Ferry on the show. And in this clip, he talks about your marketing plan or potentially your lack thereof. If you don't have a marketing plan, I would challenge you and say you're not even in business. Hmm. If you can't say to me, on the wall for the first quarter, we want – this many impressions on social, this many clicks. We're going to put out this many pieces of content. We're going to do this many direct mail pieces. We're going to have this many magazines go out. We expect this return on our investment. And we're going to do this, 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 plus calls, plus. If, if that isn't documented and written in front of you, what the hell are you doing every day? Yeah. 
Dude, here's how good uh, Tom Ferry is with people and like relationships and connecting with people right away. He only found out like what we do as a business with our with our magazines, our customized magazines on that podcast, like right before. He did a little bit of research yeah, on yeah, us coming yeah. onto the show, but he dropped that like into his cliff. Did you notice that? How many magazines you're sending dude, out? Dude, he's so the, good. That's, a, that's an the, amazing tip that you can pick up just for relationships. Because caliber. immediately it's like, oh, man, we connected with him. Took, took about what he knew, Yeah, added it in. And, oh, it's the power, dude. And it makes you feel good subconsciously. You don't even realize it. And you're just like, oh, man, look at him. I just he's realized like, yeah, watching that's the so good. Yeah. No, but you know what's the, the best thing also? And I actually give credit, a lot of credit to Tom Ferry and his business because he really is all about the math. Yes. And when it comes down to it, and, and you hear about this on this podcast, so you got to go listen to the full podcast, but his story with his dad, and his dad's obviously an extremely gifted coach in the real estate industry, a legend, as you would yeah, say. Yeah, Mike Ferry. Right? And so, but his dad was all kind of about the calls, and, and there was a certain way to it do it. It was all about cold calling. One right. thing, one thing, one Where thing. Where Tom takes more of the approach that it's math, right? And it's it, there's a lot of different ways to be successful, and almost to the point of there's like, you can almost be successful in doing any of these lead generation strategies. It's just breaking it down to the science and the math. Yeah. And that's the real tip. Yeah. The real tip there is that if you're running your business today and you don't understand the math behind your business, then you won't be able to scale. Right. And it's at every level you got to refine it and get better. I mean, we're at such a bigger level than probably a lot of people who are listening to this. They have maybe a couple employees or just them. And even for us, it's refining the math even more. Yeah. And the math is how many leads, how many t calls does it take to you know get those leads to an appointment, how many appointments turn into sales, how many sales actually go all the way through and, and you actually get the commission check and all that good stuff. Well, you the beautiful thing about that is like, if you are, and the way that he, he set it up there, if you're listening, there's no, what he says in the episode is there's no wrong way to generate a lead, mm -hmm. right? And, and so what he means by that is um, doing, doing the cold calls is a way to generate the leads, right? But so is Facebook advertising. So is direct mail. So yep. are all of these other marketing avenues. So is relationship marketing and having specific touch points in your marketing plan to connect with those people you've done business with before. Um, but what that allows you to do is once you've looked at all of your different channels and you've reverse engineered it from your goals to see how many leads you need coming in from each to convert to sales, like now you're freed up to go try something new. Yes. And you're freed up to go take that risk or take that investment in the next either digital advertising or some other piece of advertising or marketing that you may be scared to take if you are relying upon only one or two lead sources. And what's beautiful about math is that it allows you to just on the days you don't feel it, to just, run the play. And Tom the says play. all the t time, run, the, run play the play that works. Yeah, Run the play that works, meaning it's just run the play. It's you don't feel it this morning, run the play. What's the play? I have to make 100 phone calls today. Yep. Like that type of idea. We will uh, include a, a link to our leads calculator in the show notes for this episode too, because I think it's just it's basically broken out by tabs and it allows you to separate your marketing and start plugging in your numbers and start figuring out what those plays are that you can run in your business every day. So this next clip is from episode 114. It's, it's amazing that we've got episodes in the <laughs> 100s and something. Uh, but this is with Peter Larmer. Peter Larmer Dude, is a super guy. successful super awesome. agent. He's got his own show on Netflix yep. where he actually helps Was people buy. Was a music buy. producer and DJ and all that stuff. <laughs> he had stuff. like 20 number one hits in the it, UK I think it was and more then 100 I think it was in like the 50. US. I think it was 50 number one hits. He was, a, he was an amazing interview and a great person to meet. Yeah. Um, but in this clip, he talks about working with local businesses. So if I was a brand new agent, and let's just say I, I live in an area called Studio City in, in Los Angeles, which is at the foot of the Hollywood Hills. If I was a brand new agent and I didn't really know that many people, I would be out with a camera and I would be filming all the businesses in Studio City and I would be posting that online saying, here's my favorite new coffee shop. It's awesome because they've got this great new Nigerian coffee that you can only get here. Right, Bob? Seems to be a lot of Bobs today. <laughs> right, Bob, tell us about your, your coffee. <laughs> well, my coffee, do, 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 do. great. I'll be back next week with another tip on Studio City Secrets or whatever the hell. And then I would take that piece of content and I would pay for it to be advertised yeah. to 91604 <laughs> and surrounding areas. That's so good. And I would give, 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 give. 
Dude, his personality. <laughs> or, or whatever he just the hell. comes through. Yeah, he just comes through the screen. What a great personality. I love that. I mean, yeah, I love his personality. But the, the tip is so solid because you get two amazing things from it. And I think actually the second thing is better. The most obvious one is you get content that you're giving value to your database. And, and notice he said you film the coffee shop, then you make a Facebook ad or some type of ad and you boost Multiple it to that zip of code. From, yep. yep. So you're you're literally taking advantage and getting in front of people and you're adding value. It's it's glorious. But I think the main thing that you can get from it that is underestimated is the connection with the business owners yep. that you're filming about their business. Because business owners, especially in the local community, I mean, these are the influencers. They these know are the other movers. business owners. Yeah, they the know other affluent people. They're the networkers, right. man. It's like me with Reminder Media. I'm part of a networking group. There's 90 other presidents and CEOs in this networking group. Mm. So if you can land me as a client, you can naturally, by association, get to these other people. Yeah. And it's just you don't you underestimate that and what that means to be known amongst the community, and especially because you're giving free advertising to their company. Yeah. And everybody loves. That's exactly what it is. I mean, everyone's looking at what to post on social media, and and I think Peter's uh, point there was really as a new agent, how do you become well known as as, as as soon as possible. I think we actually asked him a little bit about how his video strategy sort of played yeah. into mm-hmm. his marketing. And that's where that came from is it, you have so much content there in your local community. If you go and 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 uh, interview one of the other business owners in the community, uh, you can get eyeballs on that for so cheap. Like he talked about boosting it to the zip code. You can get eyeballs on that for two, three cents. And the business owner will you. share it with their audience. Like our podcast they paid has been an incredible networking tool for yeah. us. Incredible networking tool because they want to share it with their audience and we want to network with their people and we and they want to network with our people. There's another great um, thing that you can do like on Facebook advertising, Google advertising. You can do geofencing. Mm-hmm. And then uh, so what that means is like if someone comes within the, the radius of that coffee shop. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 you yeah. can actually play that ad once they enter the radius of that coffee shop. That's awesome. And then you can go even further by uh, doing what's called day parting, which is running it only during certain times. So if there's like peak coffee times, like in the morning, obviously, or the lunch, the afternoon, pick me up Dude, rush. That is awesome. Like you could run it at certain times in that area where that coffee shop is located. Um, and it'll be relevant to the people, which is the powerful thing about yep. social media. It's so hard to find coming what's going to be relevant. You. It's going to be coming from you, relevant, mm-hmm. drive business to the coffee shop owner, which then gets you opened up to all those other connections. Correct. You have to buy in, though, to the principle that you need to get people to like you and you need to get them to want to know you and want to know who you are. Because most people buy into the concept that you have to get people to understand you're an expert in your industry. And that actually they expect that. It's like I don't think people understand that is that they expect you. If you have the title real estate agent, they expect you to be an expert in the industry. Mm. Like if you have the title financial advisor, they expect it. What they want to find out is are you a guy that they could do business with? Are right. you a girl that they could do business with? Are you someone that they actually like and would want to talk to and would want to do business with? Like that is the mind shift in business that so many people fail at and they don't get that they expect you to know your industry. They they want to find out are you likable? Do I actually want to Yeah, do but business from the personality you? standpoint, like still be yourself because 100% you want to attract your tribe. You want to attract your tribe. Yeah. Yeah. So this next clip is with Lisa Harris. It's from episode 115. Yeah, she is amazing. Yeah, she had she brought like a completely new perspective. New perspective for lead Boomy generation. She would go yep. to trade shows, um, home shows, I mm-hmm. guess, basically, and that's where she would generate all of her leads. This uh, specifically is talking about um, how she's using like a wine giveaway at a trade show. Yep. But the coolest part about this, you'll hear in the clip, is how she uses it to get like real contact information. Mm-hmm. We have a wine drawing and we have bottles of wine on the table. They actually have our stickers on them from our team with our logo. And we give away these bottles of wine. We say, hey, would you like to register and win a bottle of wine? And if so, um, we just want to be able to email you what the comparables are in your home. The key to that is I say, hey, make sure you put a really good cell phone number on there because we're going to text you. And if you're still here at the show, we want you to come back and pick it up before you leave. Mm, That's great. So I know that I get a good cell phone number from that. That's so pretty much great. Yep, smart. I find myself wanting to say, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. At the same time that we're saying, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> like, listening back. like I'm laughing at the same spots. I'm starting to like, uh-huh, What's well, so brilliant. Uh-huh, we, go the to, same spots. we go to trade <laughs> shows. Right. And we go to a lot of conferences now and getting real information and figuring yes. out how to how to follow up. But I also love how she you know, said want to send you comparable. 
right? Home values and stuff like that. Yeah, like yeah, it, value, setting yeah. the expectation of what, you know, the follow-up's going to be. Yeah. And it's something of value, but collecting someone's information. The most brilliant thing about that, it goes back to almost what we were saying in the Tom Ferry thing, is there's so many ways to generate leads. And what a creative idea to go to a home show, a wedding show, a even the auto shows in Philly, right? And it's like going to that, and there's people there, and it's a way for you to get contact information. If you buy into the Ricky Carruth type idea, it's relationships over transactions. And he talks about growing your database and just dripping on them once a week. Yeah. He said he has people on there from like 2005 type idea, and he's just dripped on them once a week, and they still call him. And he's just constantly just dripping on them because he knows when the timing's right, they're going to come to him. And Tom Ferry talks about 10% of your database should turn a year. So if you build successfully – that up, I mean, good gosh. Can you imagine if you had 10,000 qualified names on your database? Yeah. That'd and be unbelievable. Yeah. It's a, great, it's a great idea because all of those shows are happening during these life events or these milestones. Mm -hmm. So you know that you, you're you not guaranteed. Not every single person there is going to be looking to buy or sell if you're in real estate. But um, but they will know somebody. They According know to the National somebody. Association of Realtors, they'll know three to five people probably a year yeah. that are connected to three to five people a year that, that are will looking need to, yeah, that will need your services, buying, yep. selling, investing. All right. This next clip is from episode 107, where we have uh, Jared Glant. So he's like the- Jared. He's like the president, the VP of sales with- He's the president Cardone of Univers Cardone yeah. Enterprises. Cardone Capital, Cardone University, Cardone everything. Jared's a beast. <laughs> Jared is a beast. But in this clip, he talks about what sales truly is. In my opinion, everybody likes to talk about closing. They like, hey, you know, I'm a big closer and they think that's the badge of honor uh, is a salesperson, but they're wrong. The, 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 the badge of honor uh, as, as a salesperson is I can go find my own business and I can build a business. Hmm. Like, like mastering, like you said, you got 100 people on the phone, like, Mastering the art of creation of opportunity is what sales truly is. So I don't know if I caught that the first time. Sometimes I'm like looking at notes and I'm not really – I don't always catch sure. everything. Yeah. But um, I mean what he's saying there is the, the common idea, the common thought is that the best salespeople know how to close the deal. Sure. And what he's saying is that's not necessarily the case from what he's learned. The best salespeople are the ones who create – Create the, the opportunities. Deals. Yeah, create the deals. And, and you know what? It's so true because when you look at the best ones down there on the floor, like we have a lot of good closers, but the best ones are that are the ones that can consistently create a pipeline, consistently can pound the phones day in and day out and do what he's saying. And, and notice how there's a theme here from the Tom Ferry about the math and all this stuff. It's like the best ones down on the floor are the ones that can consistently pound the phone, create opportunity, or if you're door knocking out there, cause, but you're the one who can create a pipeline for yourself to actually build a mini business within a business. So if you're a salesperson that works for somebody right now, your job is to create a mini business for yourself in that business. And my best sales guys down on the floor, I don't really have to worry about. They know how to work their queue. They know how to create opportunities for themselves. They know how to leverage those opportunities to go get more. They know how to do this degrees of separation of six people to get referrals. They're the ones who know how to consistently do that over and over again. The ones that just suck are the ones that literally they come in and they expect the opportunities to fall in their lap. Well, they have a job at that point, yeah. right? Yeah, they have a job. Yeah. I hate people that just want a job. So is that is that clock. mindset, like from your perspective, is that more of a mindset thing? Like, hey, start thinking and acting like a business owner, or is it more of a talent thing? And when I say talent, I mean like you have all the clips that we're listening to, you have to be creative. You have to sure. be um, – you have to have a little bit of entrepreneurial spirit. You have to – Well, you know, one of the clips with Jared's podcast that I that, – go listen to his whole podcast. But one of the things he said, which stuck with me, and I'm saying it all the time now, is – you're not just in sales. You're a sales professional. And the ones that master sales, that professional in the word sales professional means something. 
And most salespeople rely just on their talent, rely just on their ability to. So it's like, more of a mindset it, in your. Well, I would say it's actually more of with, with the, the action athlete, to back it up. But. It's an athlete. The way an athlete trains to be a basketball player, a star basketball player, they have the mindset, they put in the work for practice, and not only that, they have talent. And those three things obviously come together to making them play in the NBA. But for salespeople, it's like my best guys are the ones that have the mindset, but then back it up with the discipline. Yeah. And they understand that every opportunity or every person they touch is an opportunity. I'm sure personal story. I went on a podcast the other day and and I got treated really poorly on this podcast. Really? Like in the way it was set up and just like the interview was fine, but yeah. just the the whole vibe of it. And, and I walked away and I forget who it was I told, I think it was Andrew Sachs, our VP of Financial Services. I said, no matter how big I get in this life, I will never treat, and this is my promise to myself, I'm never going to treat somebody different based upon who they are because you never know who you're talking to. And this guy, not that I'm some big wig or something like that, he has no idea who he's talking to and he has (laughs) no idea the influence that people can have. Right. And and you know how I know that? Because when I told him about my business on the podcast and I told him about the reach and everything like that, I could see the instant switch in his mind. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, the way he was starting to treat me and talk to me, and this happens to me a lot, is they all of a sudden it switch and I go, man, I don't want to be that person. Yeah. I don't want to be that person that all of a sudden you found out that I run a you know 40 plus million dollar business, have hundreds, tens of thousands of clients. Right. Now you care. Right. And it's like... It's ridiculous. Yeah. So great salespeople, they, they know start with the that mindset. Every thing you touch yeah. is an opportunity, and they create those opportunities, and they treat people. And it's like Tom Ferry; he's a master salesman because he made us feel so good in a matter of three minutes. <laughs> and and he closes the podcast going, "Guys, we got to get together. Yeah. Soon. We got to be." And we're like, "Tom wants to get together with us. We don't even know what to do with ourselves." You get what I'm saying? It's like he made us feel great. Buy our flights. Yeah. <laughs> All right, this next episode. Spe- oh, this is a great segue into this person because this is a David DeSell. I who love David really DeSalle. lives everything that you were just talking about. In yeah, he does, of, man. He really lives it, and you got to listen to both his, his both his interviews. But really, his most recent one was episode 108. He was in here in the studio with us. He flew down from Boston for the day, literally just to come sit so, with us yeah, in the studio and, and then have some dinner. Us, yep. Yeah, but in this one, he talks about caring about everyone, uh, your clients, your prospects. Uh, your employees. I'm going to give a little bit of uh, background to this clip, some context first, because we had asked him about this idea of relationship marketing. Mm -hmm. And it's so hard to put tangible actions on relationship marketing. You can talk about direct mail marketing. You can talk about Facebook marketing. You can say, well, here, let's set you up with a business account. Let's get you some creative. Let's find your target audience. Let's set a budget. Let's run these. Let's let's, um, uh, measure the leads. Relationship marketing, it's such a long-term So hard game. to measure, yeah. So we were asking about some specific like results from this that he found. And he's telling a story about um, another advisor that uh, he knew gave him a client because it was a lower-income client. Uh, that advisor didn't really want the business. Um, his name ended up being Justin Hoff, who's a comedian still. Um, and David sat down with him, helped him with his budgeting, helped him uh, purchase a small disability policy, and then, uh, anyway, I think you'll hear a little bit of the results in this clip. Uh, and if not, I'll kind of circle back around with what he actually got in terms of business from it. You know, the idea with relationships and, and building them is it all starts generally, and I just gave you the, the specifics, but it all starts with actually giving a crap about the person who you're sitting across from. Yeah, that's a golden always be will Always be willing. Like, my interaction with him professionally was 35 minutes. Hmm. And that 35 minutes changed, changed the, the course of my career. Yeah, so that who he was sitting with there for 35 minutes was this Justin Hoff. What ended up happening was Justin refers David to a lady named Jess where he got a $6,000 commission. She then gives him 40 referrals, and it resulted in him working in the pharmaceutical space for the rest of his career. Then he ended up consulting Justin nine years later after he had yep. become successful, and that was just for All that. from one person. All from one person. Treating that person well. Like, if you go listen to that podcast, it's so powerful because it obviously is framed up as like, you got to actually care about the person you're talking to. And it's just so often we just don't do that. Yeah. It's like, I don't even know how you, like, it frees you when you can get past in your business and get past in your life that I don't need anything from this person. 
it's almost it's so hard to do, but if you can switch to where you function today in your real estate business, your financial, I don't need anything from the people that I help. All of a sudden, I call it karma, call it whatever you want, it will start raining on you. You start going through your days. And that's why Ricky Carruth is so freaking popular, dude, because everybody applies what he says about relationships over transactions and go, Ricky, you've changed my whole perspective. I'm making phone calls today and I'm enjoying it because I'm just trying to help people. All I'm trying to do is call people up and help them. I'm yeah, not trying to right. sell yeah, an expired listing. It's just, it's I'm so not freeing. trying to sell yeah. a Fizbo. Yeah. I'm literally just trying to offer my help to them. And they're getting email addresses from that. People are saying, hey, well, can you help me? Like, it's like crazy. <laughs> But I wonder how sales, hard it is. That's what sales is. Like, I don't know. Does I haven't seen anything from Ricky necessarily come out about this, but how do you say no at some point? Like, what do you mean say well, no? Well, you to can't what? say yes. You can't help everyone with everything. So how do you like? But but saying no is helping people. Like Warren Buffett, one of his greatest pieces of advice is learning what to say no to. Right. Like that's one of his famous pieces of advice is saying no more than you say yes. Saying no to things. You know what? I'll give you. A personal um, kind of story. So my dad, he's a pastor, so he's kind of like one of my counselors. So I have a, a lot of people in my life that I talk to, but I talk to him every week. And I was talking about a, a problem that, you know, struggling with this idea that how do you show intensity to people so they know it's serious, but not do it in a way that is mean, right? Or yeah. comes across yeah, as right. angry or demeaning or anything like that. Because when you're mean, you get people know it's serious. It, it triggers the fear reactions and they move, right? right? That type of idea. <laughs> and my dad was talking about this principle of That's how I talk to my children. It, it, <laughs> love, love is not always going to be perceived. True love is not going to be perceived as fluffy and feel good and all those things. True love. And so if you truly love somebody, you're willing to have them feel uncomfortable for a moment. You're willing to have them hear the word no. And this is a great sales tactic as well. It's like, if you truly actually believe you are helping somebody, then you are willing to ask for the order because you are willing to make them have to make a decision in their life, not because you want to force them to spend money. It's not about a $99 setup fee for us. I mean, we're not going to make any money off of $99. So it's, I believe this can change your life. And I believe it so much that I'm willing to ask you to take action on it. It's like, love is not going to always come across come across as feel good and fuzzy and fluffy sometimes it's going to come across as uh hard yeah but but it, but there's you can always tell the difference between someone who actually cares about you and loves you and what they're telling you versus somebody who is just trying to get the results that's our evolutionary uh or our biological yeah, yeah. whatever trigger <laughs> warning ding 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 all right this next clip is from episode uh 119 with danny morell where we get deep into a lot of stuff in this, Man, Danny. In, in this episode. This is a great episode. It was one of our longer ones, awesome. actually. Um, but in this one, he talks about earning more and working less. That you really can earn more and work less. And it started by me proving it to myself. You see, when I was a real estate agent, I thought to myself, you know, everyone else works seven days a week. I don't want to work seven days a week. I want to work five. Mm. Everyone else only works with buyers. I don't want to work with buyers. They take up too much, too much of my time. I only want to work with sellers. Everyone else has to sacrifice their family life for money. And I thought to myself, I don't want to do that. Everyone else sacrifices their health for money. I thought to myself, I don't want to do that. This is ass backwards to me. Mm. If making money causes you to sacrifice the things that should be most important to you, which are your health and your family and your time, that it's either A, I'm not going to be in the industry or B, I'm going to find a better way to be in the industry. Dude, and that's that was a golden my nugget. <laughs> Whew. It's life by design, not life by default. There was a great quote by Steve Jobs that I saw a friend of mine post on Instagram about the idea of once you understand that life as you know it was just built by other people saying this is what life is mm -hmm. and your life doesn't have to be that way. It frees you, meaning like why do you feel you have to go to college and get a degree? Why do you feel you have to go to a job? Like for the longest time, you know, people felt like they had to stay at a company for 20, 30 years, right. invest it's in their 401k. Does. It's what everyone who came right? No one understands did. their 401k. I shouldn't say that. There's probably employees here that understand their 401k. But out of our 220 employees, Josh, I guarantee you 98% of them have no idea of their 401k. Right? They have no idea what's going on in it. But why are they investing in 401k? 
Yeah, someone because told me someone has made the contract, <laughs> and I'm not. This is not any financial Ariel's advice. Back there nodding. Yeah, people are nodding their heads. <laughs> this is not financial advice from 401k, right? But the point being, it's driving home the fact that so often we do the constructs of life because the people before us told us this is how life should be and once you free yourself to understand hey i'm going to live a life by design what does that mean i'm going to live a life by what danny's saying i'm going to live the life that wants to fit into yeah. tony ray baker man that podcast you know yeah. we were not sharing his clip but that was a great episode he wanted to be able to take a vacation a month yeah so he wanted to fit his real estate business into his life that enables him to take a vacation once a month you say and you he, want to take a vacation he built it. and he did like it he architect yeah, with a freaking goal. iguana. So you got to go check out the <laughs> episode for the iguana reference. But the point being is like that to the world seems crazy, but he did it. And super and, successful. And super successful. <laughs> and that's what you find out. The the four-hour work week guy, Tim, Tim, Tim Ferriss. Ferris, yeah. yeah. Like people think that's crazy. There are two different schools of thoughts out there. There's the Grant Cardone, hustle, 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 and then there's t- the but Tim Ferriss. I don't think there's any wrong. There's not wrong. Like, it's if you want life hustle, by design, baby. Yeah, that's exactly it's the what life it is. by design. Yeah, <laughs> it's where you perform the best. It's where you're naturally drawn to. That's yeah. where you're going to be passionate. Dude, um, but the, the main takeaway quote, is just don't let it live. Don't let it go by default. Dude, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell people to go check out your LinkedIn on what you wrote about the 16-hour uh, workday. It's oh, brilliant. Yeah. Dude, there's yeah. so much <laughs> wisdom in that um, uh, thing you put up. It was like a picture. It was whatever. like a time hop from yeah. 11 years ago, I think, or something like that. Yeah, where it showed you and your kids, and you were so- saying something about, like, I thought the you know 16-hour home long at days. Th- home at 4 a.m., thought yeah. these days were over or something like that. And now your perspective is, I hope those days are never over. Right. But not because of the long hours. Right. It's just because if you're doing something you love to do, it does. the hours don't matter. So fun. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. It's, so fun. it's such a good perspective. And it impacts every area in your life. You know, yep. when you're feeling rewarded or you're feeling, um, you're feeling um, accomplished in your work, you're, gonna, you're going to act differently at home. Mm-hmm. If you're feeling accomplished in your personal life, you're going to act differently at work. So it, it blends across. This next clip is from Brian Casella. This was episode 120, where he talks about, I freaking love this clip. <laughs> you, you're going to love it, too. Luke hasn't listened to these yet. I, have. I haven't. I'm hearing them for the first time. Where right he now, talks about these. calling uh, expired listings and FISBOs. For those of you calling expires and FISBOs, try this one, where you say, hey, you know what, Mr. Expired, Mr. FISBO, you may not be ready to work with an agent right now. However, can I give you some advice before I let you go on some red flags Meaning, if you hear this from agents, beware. And they're like, oh, my God, tell me. I'm like, you know what? Get a pen. Get a paper. I'm going to go to town and let you know. If you hear this from agents, be very careful. Dude, that is And what fantastic. do I tell them? Fantastic. I tell them all the bull realtors say, oh, I, I have, you know, six buyers right now. Let me just go take a quick look at the home, right, and then see if it's a fit for my buyers. I'm like, dude, that's bullshit. And I just go through all the bull lines that realtors say. So when I call them back in a week, I'm like, hey, it's Brian. Remember that list that I gave you? How many red flags did you get this week? And they're like, oh, my God, there's been 60 people that called, and more than half of them said half the stuff that you said. You're a genius. Now- <laughs> <laughs> that really is so good. Well, man. he's so good because he even talks – he understands the psychology yep, of people human so psychology. well. And yep. he understands how to connect with people so well. And he's got the personality for it. But he even talked earlier in that podcast about how he did uh, – he did like hypnotism or something mm-hmm. like that. And he talked – he made a joke about he planted some ideas into our mind. But like how great is that – to recognize, first of all, to have enough self-awareness in your own industry to know the BS that people are yep. going to say to everybody, yep. and then to use that as leverage that to is, build the that relationship. That's the first time in our years of doing this that I've heard that tactic. I mean, that's <laughs> how awesome it is. Like, yeah. It's so good, too, because you are separating yourself from the competition instantly. Yeah. And guess what you're also using? You're using the value strategy. You're using the relation. Hey, no problem. Let me just give you some tips. Let me just offer you some value that's basically going to decredit my competition. With, if anything, and then from that calls point back forward. and said, "Hey, just want to check in. Did you hear any of that?" And people think what you said at the end. The guy's a genius. <laughs> <laughs> How did you know? All right, this next clip is from episode 109 with Beth Traverso, where she talks about geographic farming and sticking with it. Yeah, I've been doing uh, geographic farming. I started with one farm um, of like 500 houses and um, 
one thing to know about that is it is really important that you commit to it for at least a year. Because, yeah. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've received, like, one mailer from an agent in my, my post. <laughs> I look at everything, of course. I'm like, oh, what's this person doing? Right. Like, oh, who's trying to do – who's doing this, you know? And then, like, you never hear from them again. Like, oh, okay. Flash in the pan. But it co- – because it costs money. You know, it costs money each time. But you got to have a budget set aside for that. And so um, I, I started seeing results about 12 to 18 months after – consistently mailing every once a month and then I ramped it up to twice a month for a while and then I started getting like some angry phone calls from people <laughs> sometimes <laughs> which I've learned to actually not be too afraid of that like it's all right oh you that's know, a golden nugget right the there <laughs> I think you actually go on to say in that clip um like if you're not getting angry responses from yeah you're not doing your job, <laughs> doing your job. like I tell my salespeople that all the time people might hate me for saying this but it's the truth if you don't get some reaction that causes a little bit of passion in people maybe call it anger yeah. you're not you're not going hard enough that's how you know that's how you know how <laughs> you're supposed to go and that's how you tell the line but I mean the consistency consistency dude yeah. so many people spend their way out of the business this is why 87 percent of real estate agents fail 90 percent of financial violence Advisors fail. It's you slowly spend your way out of the business. You test farming for three months and you spent a lot of money. And you're like, I spent 500 bucks every mailing. I'm 1500 bucks in. And you're freaking crying there. So you stop. And then you go over to social media or Zillow when you throw $3,000 into Zillow. You're like, I did it for three months. I spent, I've spent literally 4,500 bucks and got nothing. It's because you weren't consistent. You, you're better off con- committing ten grand to farming and sticking with it, and and actually making the phone calls, doing the door knocking, one grand on 10 and you'll things. make it. Because right. guess what? One commission check of an average home sale price of two hundred thousand dollars is going to be like six grand. So one home sale from that neighborhood you're farming will cover that cost. Yeah. Right. Well, not if you spend ten grand, but if you spend you know the forty five hundred I was joking about. But the point well, right, being yeah. is it's it's so easy to recover the cost if you think long term, not short term. Yeah. And and people just oh they they spin no, it's, their it's, way out of the business so slowly. Right. They send one magazine and they go, I didn't get anything from it. And it's just like, well if you were expecting to send this thing out and get freaking a hundred sales why did you only send sixty magazines? Why didn't that. you send ten thousand? I love that question. It's right. like it doesn't it doesn't make any sense. What when, did you go into this with the wrong context? Like, yeah. why were you thinking that that that's not how it works? I wouldn't want you to sign up anyways. You got to buy into the philosophy of relationships, consistency, all that good stuff that we know. Yeah, and this tracks all the way back to what we were talking about in the first clip with Tom Ferry in terms of, yeah, you have to track everything. Mm-hmm. Like you you we're not saying just go send postcards for eighteen months and don't think about it. Yeah. <laughs> like you have to track it, but the point there is you have to understand that there's there is a consistency like like Luke talked about, like Beth talked about, and the numbers the numbers show it. You know, direct mail has a better uh, response rate than any other piece of marketing. Mm-hmm. Now it's going to be more ex- it's, it's more going expensive. to be more expensive mm-hmm. than than a Facebook ad. But I think like the comparison is direct mail right now is 5 a little over 5% response rate and then you've got your online advertising pieces that are anywhere from 0.2% you know to 0.4% response rate based on how many people are seeing them. Yep. You do the math, you know, figure out well if I have to if let's say I want to generate 200 leads, how much do I have to how many people do I have to touch on a consistent basis to get um uh, to get that kind of 5% response yep. rate, right? So what 1000 people, 5% of 1000, 5% of 10,000. What's the math there? Somebody somebody that's good at math, 500 people. No, 5% of 1,000 is... Two, oh, I didn't say... You said 10,000. 10,000 is 200 people. <laughs> 4,000 is... <laughs> this is bad. This Ariel, is real bad. Ariel, fix QD. this in post. Yeah. This is why we use Excel. No, if you want to do... It's 4,000. 4,000 pieces of direct mail to get 200... 200 spots. No, that, that's crazy. That's a, that, that might be a high number for a lot of people to think about. But it's it's all just a math problem. It's it all is. an Excel spreadsheet that I you can that. tweak with. <laughs> Tweak the numbers with, and then and then stick with it. Yeah, and she also did another golden nugget within that golden nugget. See how I did that there? But the other golden nugget within what the golden nugget that? A, was a, a golden nugget. Yeah, nugget. <laughs> no, what she did was she said you set aside a marketing budget and you commit to it. Yeah. 
right? That's you good. almost treat it like your taxes. Like set a, create an account where your money for your taxes goes in there and don't touch it because you're right. going to need that money, right. ladies and gentlemen. And so the, the point being is like set aside 10%. Right. Of and your this is money from someone doing. Uh, this is someone doing uh, in the twenties or thirty million in sales. Yeah, yeah, correct. Like she's doing insane, yeah, she's a huge producer. sales volumes, huge in, producer uh, in Washington. Yep. All right, we have one. We have time for one more clip here. This is with Andy Dane Carter. This is going back all the way. And I want to give a shout out to Andy Dane Carter because he, you know, had a huge following, and he was one of the first big. I think he was like our third guest on the show. You know, people to give us a shot. To yeah. give us a chance. And that speaks volumes to who the guy is because that's what he does constantly. Well, we went out it's and met. Like, we were talking about the podcast, yeah. how you, you just um, – you have a, a relationship now that has uh, come from this disrupt tour that we yeah, went on like, like two like years ago. two years ago. That's when we first met Andy yep. and he invited us into the bar that he owns yep. and he got his drinks. And Such a good guy and gave us amazing. a shot on a podcast that didn't have any viewers really at the time. <laughs> we were just launching. He had 130, 40,000 followers. Like, I mean, it's just crazy. It's awesome. Well, this was actually before we were even numbering uh, interviews. So this is between episode 39 and 40. It doesn't <laughs> actually have an episode number. Um, but this is where we asked him. Um, we, this was actually we asked him about failure. And it came after he just told us his story. Uh, we were asking him about how he kind of made sure. it and got bigger and got his following. Uh, he had told us a story about just going for it and wanting to meet or work with Gary Vee. So he goes and spends thousands of dollars yeah. on this workshop. Uh, at Gary's office or his location, spends tons of money on a signed Jets football helmet. Then he buys something for a bunch of Gary's staff, having no idea if any of this is going to pay off. Um, and obviously it did because he's he's uh, incredibly successful now. But we asked him kind of like, what would you have done if that would have failed? Yeah. And this was sort of his response to that. And especially in real estate, especially in marketing, it's like, so it didn't work out. So what? I, like, that's it. Like, I'm gonna try again tomorrow. <laughs> that's probably the best golden nugget of the like brass tacks. That's so what? what it is. I'll try dude. Again tomorrow. I, I, it's crazy. I've shared maybe this before. Is my wife's grandfather super successful guy? Uh, you know, very very successful, both in terms of money and business. And you know, I don't really know him extremely well, but I've gotten to know him over the years of being married to Megan. And I asked him one time. I said, Hey, you know what? It's been your secret, right? Not that everybody has a secret, but when you look back, what's what's made you successful? The things that we ask on the podcast. And you know what his answer was? Well, I just kept going. <laughs> I just kept putting one foot in front of the other. And it's like if you find yourself at the moment right now where everything's crashing down, you're listening to this podcast, just put one foot in front of the other. Just do it again. So what? So what? And that's what it is. Uh, Can't Hurt Me, the David Goggins book. Oh, oh yeah. it's hard. Yeah. Do it anyways. Do it anyways. Do it anyways. Like, that's the difference maker. It's not a magic formula. It's not a, a routine. It's literally, I'm going to get back up. Yeah. It's how many rounds can you get back up. Yeah. And if you get back up, get back up, get back up, and focus on value, and focus on other people, you'll win. Mm. You'll win every single day. Might take you 20 years. Might take you 15. Might take you 10. Might take you 40. 50. Right? Everybody's journey is going to be a have? little different, but then you're going to get there and you're going to realize it was really about the journey. It had well, nothing there's to this, do um, with the success. <laughs> there's this uh, quote or story or whatever that I heard. I think I read it on LinkedIn where um, you know, a, a young woman looking to enter a career field and talking to her mother and she's like, I don't know that I want to become a lawyer because by the time I – or maybe it was a doctor or something. By the time I get my medical degree and, and actually complete my residency and become a doctor and can practice on my own, I'll be like 32. And I was like, well, you're going to be 32 one day anyway. You might as well be 32 and a doctor. <laughs> and it's like, you don't, so have that, you don't have that percept or that perspective as no. an 18-year-old. But, man, you have that perspective as a 38-year-old. <laughs> Time goes, man. It you're going to be 38 by. anyway one day. Yep, it flies by. Hey, Luke, we're going to be, we're going to be uh, a year older anyway one day, so we might as well have the number one podcast. Yes, on, number one podcast. And we need you iTunes. guys. We need you to help us out. Get there. We can share it. You know, I'm proclaiming this now. The white whale of Stay Paid is Tony Robbins. I, I knew you were going to say Can Tony Robbins. Can we get Tony Robbins on the podcast? I don't even know what I would do. W Tony, if you ever listen to this, we would fly anywhere to interview you. So yes, we would. Just let us know. Yeah, Andrea's like, yeah, I will fly too. <laughs> But that would be incredible. I just need to get my passport in case. You got to put the vision out, out there. Of the country. Yeah. So, but so many good guests coming. We 
seriously, anything you guys can do with the reviews, sharing it with people, just because, you know, a lot of times, just being honest, guys, the bigger guests don't want to come on unless they feel there's an audience. Mm -hmm. And we have an incredible audience and we want people to know it. And I know, you know, our passion is getting to the actionable items. And so we want to keep bringing that to you guys. So any help you can give us by review, sharing it with people is greatly appreciated. Absolutely. Thank you so much for listening. To dive deeper into this episode, get the links for all of these uh, clips that we showed um, and also to find any of those resources that we mentioned, go to staypaidpodcast.com for the show notes. Uh, And while you're there, you can also find videos of this episode and all of our episodes. And like Luke said, if you're interested in supporting the show, there's really only two ways that we ask you to do that. This show is for free. Your payment can be. Head on over to iTunes, give us a five-star rating, leave a comment just like Tim Bushnell did. And the best way is to tell about, tell a friend about us and share anywhere. Share on your social media, share through text message, share an email. If you want to get a hold of me or Luke, email us at podcast at remindermedia.com or you can find us on Instagram. We are at Stay Paid Podcast. For this episode of Stay Paid, I'm Joshua Stike. Guys, and I'm Luke Acre, and the episode action item is quite simple. Subscribe to Stay Paid. If you're already a subscriber, get a friend to subscribe to Stay Paid. Go listen to all these clips. It will be worth it. It will be worth its weight in gold to get somebody to listen to these clips, to get somebody to listen to these full episodes. I know it will change their life. Josh and I have improved tremendously since interviewing these people. Like the ideas that we're getting, it's unbelievable, honestly. It's kind of crazy. So remember, the difference between a top producer and a mediocre producer in every single industry we've worked in is top producers take action, so take action on that today. 